We started playing live when we were still in high school. We were 16, but I think right from the first time we ever performed for anyone, I mean, even for each other, when we would run into each other's bedrooms and play new songs, we always enjoyed it. And it's just been a huge part of the last two decades of our life, just traveling around the world. It's one of the best parts of being a musician is taking the music that you write at home and then sharing it with a community of people that you don't know and that amazing connection of you standing on stage and people singing these songs you wrote and the emotions on their face, the whole thing. It's just, it's truly um, almost impossible to understand what it's like until you do it. And we just get to do it all the time.
Brooks, what's going on, Toronto? How are you doing out there? Well, first things first, we apologize for missing the show last year. This is obviously a makeup. Yeah. We, uh, we existed on baloney and pop tarts, so we get sick really easy. Uh, as kids, we just didn't um, get the nutrients we needed to fight off a cold. So we apologize. A cold took us down, got laryngitis. We had to cancel a bunch of shows. And so we didn't get to come here and we were very sad, but I can say right now, I feel very happy that we're here right now. One of the reasons why I feel so glad to be here now, as opposed to in October, is because I can tell you love us more now. And that's an important part of every relationship is when you take your love away for a short period of time to remind the person why they should treat you right, or you're not gonna come visit again. Um, no, I was gonna say one of the reasons why I'm so excited is because you've had a little more time, I hope, listening to our new album, which is called Cry Baby. But even if you haven't, we have fantastic news. We're gonna play a couple songs off of it right now. And uh, it's gonna be wild and then it's gonna lead into a section of songs you know very well. And Sarah hopes that it elicits a lot of dancing. Just, I wanna put it out there because I think a healthy relationship is speaking your expectations to your partner. And as our partner for the evening, you must know that Sarah likes organic wine uh, and no. dancing. No. You don't like organic wine? I like natural wine. Oh, I'm sorry. Our relationship's breaking down lately, so I haven't been hearing her clearly, but Sarah loves natural wine. She's been trying to get a glass of it all day, uh, but so far nothing. Uh, but she also loves dancing, so uh, we're gonna play some new songs, but I just wanna say thank you so much for being patient, waiting for us to come back. It's very exciting to be with you this evening.
tell me, tell me where do we start? Everything is falling apart. Same shit that kept us apart. I've been gone too long. Turning that wheel, but I can't let go. 
know this feeling also Feel it in my bones Take a breath, take a breath with me Now take a break, take a break from you You want me to slip, I take my head out of my chest I just don't need it anymore Take my head out of the game, I just don't need it anymore Take a breath, take a breath with me Sir
Thank you so much. One of the... One of the first times that we came to Toronto uh, as, as young people, when we first started our career, we actually played a, like a, fest, a street festival um, on the Danforth. And um, yeah, there was no, we were, no, we were nobodies yet. You know, we were, we were just sort of getting our, getting our, our toes wet. Our, you know, we were just taking any gig that came our way. It had been a weird year. Um, we'd had an opportunity to play a big event in Calgary that our dentist organized. And, and then there was this really sweet gig that we drove all the way across the entire continent to do. Where, um, where we played uh, the pool stage and the only person that paid attention to the gig was the lifeguard. And, and then, our, then our manager at the time, it was a very brief, brief position he held in our world, he had made a suggestion that we come and play, which was, you know, it was a cool gig because there was a lot of people walking around on the Danforth and it was an opportunity to draw people in with our uh, natural um, singing talents. And so... Uh, we we got on stage and we were we were under a lot of stress because we had the manager that we were working with had hired a videographer who was gonna film us film the magic um, that was early Tegan and Sarah just two acoustic guitars we may have even been sitting on stools and uh, and the footage the footage was gonna be used for what was then called an EPK which was an electronic press kit which you then you then sent out to you know, record labels and, and festivals and people who would book shows. And so it was really important that we would get really good footage of ourselves playing, um, playing this, this big stage on a big, you know, the biggest city in Canada. Like, you're playing this stage. We were like, it was fucking, yeah. And so we got up on stage and we played our set and nobody uh, paid attention to us and we got into a huge fight on stage, which... Uh, which was all captured on film. And then afterwards, our manager was like, uh, excuse my swearing for the kids up front, but really, you're out past dark and it's a concert, so you probably expect a little bit of swearing. So um, our manager basically said uh, to us after the thing was done, that was fucking embarrassing. And no, 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 he made us watch it. He did make us watch it, and he said, that footage is fucking unusable. And... Uh, and we still managed to get here. So I, um, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not always proud. I'm not always, a pr I'm not always proud of those memories, but the reason why I bring it up, out of the old memory bank, um, is because one of the songs that we had just written, well, Tegan really had just written, was a song that was sort of unlike anything else we'd written at that point. We'd kind of had a brief period of time. We were sort of like, punk rock, sort of sloppy electric guitar, and then suddenly we started playing acoustic. And Tegan wrote this really, uh, you know, to me, like a very profound song for like an 18-year-old to kind of like whip out. And the manager at the time said, this is a fucking hit. He was like, this is a hit. And that song ended up, you know, actually in some ways taking us a lot of places. It wasn't a hit, but it got us onto David Letterman and it got us onto a movie soundtrack. And uh, yeah, it really... It opened up a lot, a lot of doors that that uh, footage from the Danforth Festival couldn't. So here, here's that song. Here's that song. Show us plenty of new betray my old shoes for new feet. Grab a new seat. Don't like the one I got. Fabric's wearing through and it's wearing me out You're wearing me down Watching our baseball games and low budget telethons And like watching you yourself When you yourself is on Got time to wander, waste and to whine when it comes to you, it seems like I just can't find the time. So watch your head, watch the ground. See, it's time to learn to swim when you start to drown. See, it's time to learn to swim the way down. If 
Toast and the last locals who I'm gonna end the endless war Over who kills the last koala bear Who in death will love him more than I He grabs me by the hand and drags me to the shore And he says, maybe you don't love me Or you'll grow to love me even more than I You know another way to get it so it's not me How I would be It's a different situation Different situation Lay awake in the night Just staring at the ceiling above Folding pieces of it faster Don't you waste your time Trying to remember this, nothing will be lost in the air. And you burn, burn, burn your life down. Don't get me to the door, out of bed, under track, I'm not sure. Starting over, it's a different situation, different situation. You wake up in the night and refuse to be afraid of it now. Falling pieces of it faster, don't you wait? Against my cheek, I can 
we uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, we've been talking a lot about what we want lately. I think you like hit a certain age, and and mortality kind of comes in, and you start to think about not to bring it down or anything, but just a brief moment of mortality talk, if you will. Um, we're talking a lot about what we want, and when you know when you're in your 20s. For us, we just wanted to be able to be in a band and survive and pay our rent. In our 30s, we really wanted to queer the mainstream. We were tired of being, you know, that was like, it's a different time. It was a different time. All the major brands hadn't uh, created their own uh, LGBTQ site off their main site and then told us we should be happy with that. Um, that yeah, that hadn't happened yet. <laughs> Sorry. That's a little pride, pride month pink washing bashing. Um, <laughs> All the banks hadn't put a flag in their window yet. Um, we'll just take the money. We'd rather have the money, but uh, thanks for the flag. But um, anyway, in our 30s, we wanted to queer the mainstream. We wanted to reach more people. We were tired of, of being relegated to the indie rock world. It was, it, it was a world that we weren't always welcome in. And then our 40s have been, well, Sarah had a kid. Yeah. And I got a dog. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We all know what's harder. Having a dog. But you start to think about what you want out of your life. You start to think, I want fuller, not necessarily bigger. This has been the thing we think a lot about. Um, we talk a lot about it. We've been trying to build it. And one of the things we also talk about is that you don't feel as competitive in your 40s. I don't want to be the biggest band. I don't want to. I don't want to win. I don't want to sell the most tickets or sell the most albums. I do want to be rich. So I mean, <laughs> so buy merchandise. Uh, we start to focus on other things. You know, we've started a foundation. It's called Tegan and Zara Foundation. We've raised. We've raised over a million dollars. This year alone, we are sending, we're sending a fuckload of kids, LGBTQ kids to LGBTQ, LGBTQ summer camps. Sorry, I've never said that word before. LGBTQ, um, um, <laughs> we're, we're, I'm sorry, I don't know what just happened to me. I fell apart there. I was straight for a second and I was like, no, I'm not. Um, yeah, we're, we're We've written almost $125,000 uh, worth of scholarships for LGBTQ kids across North America. 26 camps we're sending kids to. I just wanted to take this moment. We're gonna play this one last acoustic one and then we're gonna get into old Tegan and Sarah. And I, I uh, yeah. I mean, we sneak a few new ones in there too, but don't worry. It's kind of like that banana penicillin. You won't even notice it going down. Um, no, but I just want to take a moment and say like, how, how grateful we are that our career has had all these different decades. It's hard to keep yourself going, and we're, we're just so grateful. And this next song is off an album called Heartthrob, where we decided we wanted to be, you know, we wanted to, to conquer a new world. And uh, everybody told us we shouldn't do it because our fans wouldn't, wouldn't take it. They would abandon us, and you didn't. And so I want to dedicate this one to you guys for sticking with us. So Me up. Well, how long did you think? 
got last Then you disappear for weeks to pull How many times could I pass?
Thank you so much. You guys have been fantastic. Thanks for, thanks for all the cheers. Thanks for all the dancing. I, what Tegan said earlier was a lie. I, I actually am fine with no dancing. I mean, not like as a law, just, I mean, I don't know what people boo me now. That's probably people who dance. They boo, they're booers. Um, no, you know what I like though? I like the people, I like people who do the swaying. I like, 
I like all of that. That's great. I know you've been standing a long time as someone who has sore hips now, like chronically. Just bless you. Just bless all of you. We want to dedicate this next song to the absolutely fabulous act that needs no introduction that started off tonight. A huge round of applause for our friends, Dragonettes. I know Martina already said it, but we met over 20 years ago, and uh, this is the first time we're touring on purpose together. It's an honor to share the stage with such a vivid talent as Martina. Her voice is just absolutely absurd. If you have just been introduced to Dragonette, please go out, buy music, support, um, and this one's, this one's for them.
pleasure to spend the evening with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's not funny. For a moment, I really thought my dream had come true, and I really was just one person this whole time, but... <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'd like to introduce you to our band. On the guitar, it's gonna, this is gonna sound weird, but I just learned his last name. That sounds weird, but I wanna be honest, because I feel like that's my brand. <laughs> On the guitar, one of the funniest people I've ever played music with. Very, very sweet, very talented. Please give a huge, this is only his second, third show, third show ever with us. Over there, please welcome my friend. 
Kirk Shainer. You having a good time? Just two songs to go. Let's do it. On the drum kit, he's been playing with us since heartthrob days. Will you give a huge round of applause for our amazing drummer? That's Adam Criscow. Christ go. Christ go. Christ. And last, but certainly not least, this young, young gentleman here plays bass and keyboards and the computers, which is like a whole other instrument, and keeps Sarah and I in line, programmed our teleprompter. Uh, it looks pretty snazzy tonight, if I don't say so myself. I did dress him, but uh, my very own Ken doll. Please give a huge round of applause to Grant Zabritsky. I did it. I remembered everyone's names. We're gonna play two more songs. Thank you so much for being here. Wow. Where do you go with your broken heart and soul? What do you do? with the left over you. How do you know when it's time to let go? Where's the good go? Where's the good go? so much we're gonna do one last song get home safe if you haven't yet watch high school and buy our new book junior high yeah i'm just a little whore <laughs> kids and i'm begging for a 
attention Turning something for some tension Getting tired of making up this racket Waiting on you to get your ass in gear Didn't wanna be so infested Played it cooler than I overdressed it You were there, I was tired of this Nonsense, you pretend you don't Uh